Well, here's one man's idea of what tools an executive may be using in his office in a few years' time. Bob, is this a so-called paperless office we keep hearing so much about? No, of course not. Not for the 1990s. In fact, there will still be books, as you can see here, and magazines. Thank goodness for that. I'm pleased about that. And waste paper bins. <laughs> um, but if you want to keep important letters, like this one, for example, here, um, you'd have a fax reader. Uh, machine reader over here. I can put it in there very carefully. Now, this is just a mock up of what was going on, but inside there you would expect a facsimile reader That's that right. only reads the, a sort of picture of the actual letter. It's not reading the content of the letter. Correct, but then we digitize it and then we display it on the screen. So you can see it on your little screen here. That's I correct. See. And where are you going to store it? I'm going to store it in what we call a read write. Um, there you are, read write optical reader. Come, uh, optical reader. Notice the size of it and consider that a year's amount of work and information can be stored on a thing that size. I presume you could also send it off to your central database as Correct. well. That's your local one in your right. office. But how are you going to relocate it once you've stored it in there? Well, first I've got to store it, right? And for that I use voice recognition. For example, let's store this one. I could say, um, letter uh, dated March 3rd, 1996, David Allen, store. And to retrieve it? I use the same approach. I notice no cord on your No, on your we called as communications then, infrared, infrared communications. It still has a dial on it. Does that mean your voice recognition isn't quite good enough? Oh, no. You see, it's got a fail-safe mechanism. Should I have a cold and lose my voice, I can use a dial-up. OK. Show us more about your screen. Yes, the screen is an advanced um, form of the flat screen which we have coming in today. But now, it's a large size. Now, this is, it acts as a storage media as well. When you switch the computer off, it doesn't just disappear. It's there permanently. It will stay there forever That's unless right. you change it. Uh, it's, it's, it's really electronic paper. Mm -hmm. And we can shuffle the paper around the board here and control it. Show me the sort of thing you might be doing. Well, first to control it, we have, a, in fact, a touch overlay. Mm -hmm. So, so it acts as an input device as well as an output device. Correct. Now, let's take an example. The company has these branches, you see? And I want to find out what's going on in Birmingham. So I, I press Birmingham. Let's look at the problem areas there. So we see there's staffing, sales, production. Let's look at sales. And then we find a display here, right, showing the sales record for the quarter. And I notice that the video sales have fallen and the telecom sales have fallen. Now, this is just a mock-up, of course. It, it, you expect it to come up as quickly as that? That's correct, yes. And what would you do about it now? Well, now um, I want to, in fact, ring up the head sales manager and uh, pass him a message. Because he might not be there. Correct. But well, what I'm going to do is send him an annotated message on this piece of text. I'll do that. Harry, Bob, the sales are falling in your area and I want to know immediately. End message. And it's gone. Of course, you could do that today, the, our voice annotations. What's actually happened, but it wouldn't, of course, recognise your voice. It's looking up his name, it's finding his address, it knows exactly where to send the message, right. and it's taking that message and sending it digitally into his computer, and then when he comes into his office, he can display it and it's find out what's like happening. It's a user agent behind it. That's correct. Suppose he's in his office. What uh, ah, have you got is, to offer This there? is important enough that I would like to have an eyeball-to-eyeball -eyeball confrontation with that sales manager and his key staff. So, into teleconferencing. Hi, Mac. Oh, hi, Bob. Good to see you. Uh, say, Mac, I've been having a word with Francois about that, uh, that contract you mentioned, and we seem to be in total agreement. Uh, yes, Mac, uh, if you are happy to, uh, just uh, say the word down and we go ahead. Well, it'd be great when we have that. In fact, British Telecom are promising something like that by the mid-90s. Is that correct? That is true, yes. Well, that's wonderful. But this is... You know, for formal, your formal business place, mm -hmm. it's where you're actually working. Very often an office is actually used for meetings, more informal communications. What can technology offer there? Well, we must be careful. The office in, in that time would be, in fact, for interactions. Notice that the profile of the flat screen does, doesn't obstruct any of the communications around the desk. Um, and, for example, um, let's look at this doodle I'm doing here. I could display that doodle on the same flat screen, but now used as an electronic whiteboard. I see. So, but what happens if he wants to change it, if you're with a meeting of your managers? Does he have to push you out of the way and get at your work desk? No, you'll, you'll have, in fact, something like this, an electronic pen, which you can, in fact, go up there and make adjustments and changes to it. So I no longer have to use my Polaroid to take pictures of my oh, no. whiteboard to see what's going on in and fact, record it. In fact, on my flatbed printer here, 
since you've been a good boy, you can have a coffee. <laughs> well, that's very, very good indeed. Now, what happens when you're away from the office? You've got all this equipment when you're sitting here. What happens when you go on tour or you're outside of your office? Well, under here, I have a keyboard. The ah, you have a keyboard. keyboard. Oh, yes, it won't go you away. You haven't got rid of that yet. Oh, no. And this, in fact, is a computer. You can expect by the mid-1990s to have the mainframe of today squeezed into a keyboard like this, the intelligent keyboard. And um, it also will have something like 20 megabytes of RAM memory. So I can, in fact, open my briefcase. And, of course, you have another flat screen there. Which, again, doesn't need to be plugged into the computer to keep its, its memory in there. Everything no. is recorded and That's kept right. There. And I have the telephone, which, in fact, is a cellular telephone, and which I can use to, in fact, contact you on the way home, in case I've forgotten to, say, to tell you something. Is it science fiction? Do you really believe it's going to happen? It is certainly going to happen. All the technology is here today. The problem is putting it together. Of course, the important part you've missed out is inside that computer itself, and that's all the software. And integrating the system together is one of the great problems of today, isn't it? How much is it all going to cost, though? Isn't it going to be too expensive for people to be able to afford to put these into their offices? Um, no, I think the technology's prices are going to be rapidly falling, particularly the optical disc, the flat screen, and voice recognition. They're all here now. It's a question of getting the price.